everyone. Today I wanted to talk about Scorpio. Happy Halloween, happy Scorpio time. As a yogi, I'm not really crazy about Halloween or any holidays that celebrate fear so much. But uh, in honor of Scorpio time, I wanted to talk about ghosts and the paranormal. And I've talked to, you know, I've had a lot of clients who've seen ghosts and things like that. And I always tend to notice that Scorpio or the eighth house is very strong and tenanted. So I figured I'd give you guys just a couple of quick examples of that with some neat little ghost stories. All right. Um, so ghost story time. Here we go. Now, one of the charts that I'm going to show you guys, let's look at this. All right. Hope you all can see this. Um, this is the chart of a really, really fascinating case. This is a woman who has seen, who has had basically um, reoccurring dreams of like standing up, feeling like she's standing up in bed. Actually, I'm not clear if she said that she stood up in bed or felt like she was, but she would feel like she was uh, being dragged through brush and trees and tree limbs and branches. And it's like, ah, oh, I'm being like, being like dragged through all the stuff and would see like a, a dark mass or something. Now, um, what's really wild is that another friend of mine witnessed her going through this and witnessed her. They were like late at night living in a house in the mountain. They're staying in a cabin in the mountains, like no, no extra light or electricity was even running then. And it was the middle of the night. And my friend witnessed her friend, we'll call her JP. And JP was going through this episode and was like, oh, like what's going on in the middle? And in her sleep, she was being dragged through. This, these leaves and these branches. And my friend literally looked at her and swears that about two feet above her, there was this black, like circular, like two foot by two foot orb of uh, just a black mass, not a mask like you wear, but a black just mass of blackness. And even though it was dark, you could see the blackness very, very clearly. And it just happened for some time and they were spooked. And I guess she woke her up and then told her and they were okay. And then later that same night, they saw another weird, weird like orb and black mass like later down the balcony, but being older 60 year old women, they didn't think to film it with their phones or anything, right? There actually is a ton of footage of ghosts though that have shown up on security cameras and footage. You can go and like look into that, go to some YouTube channel, Ghost Hunter things if you want, you know? Um, and they've even like, uh, well, I won't go into that, but. You know, if you're watching an astrology channel, it's probably not that big of a stretch for you to understand that ghosts kind of do exist and they are real. And yogis have always known about this and confirmed this. And yogi, advanced yogis can literally converse with ghosts and have conversations with them. And, you, you know, believe it or not. Um, okay. So now this is the woman who witnessed that. And you notice how the other... Oh, I forgot to even mention. But yeah, so this woman... Um, the woman who witnessed that she has Rahu and Scorpio. So it's very hard to avoid the Scorpio realm. You see, like when you have Rahu in the eighth or Rahu and Scorpio, you try to avoid that stuff, but it drags you into it. And uh, she also has Jupiter there. We don't know if this time is correct, um, but also noteworthy Jupiter Rahu, the single mother placement I mentioned in the previous video. I've never even looked at this chart before, but this is someone who I know has been a single mom twice before. So. Had that happen once, uh, husband left, husband came back, they tried to have a kid again, and then he left again. So that's really, that's really rough. Um, and that's that tough Jupiter Scorpio, Jupiter Rahu placement. This is the friend of hers who witnessed it. And she has Rahu and Scorpio as well. So she's kind of like prone to paranormal events or witnessing them. And she's also going to get drawn to those things. And this person is very fascinated by the paranormal. Now, what's what it's also interesting is that that woman was married to this person. We'll call him JD. And JD and, and this partner were, were house sitting, a very old house. I know about this house. I've seen it before in my neighborhood. And it's very old and creepy and creaky. It was so old that when it was sold, the property was sold, they had to lift the house up and move it back to preserve it because it was literally like part of Charleston's historic preservation. Um, and one night they're house sitting in here. It's just him and his 
his partner and he has to get up in the middle of the night to go peace. He walks down the <clears throat> creepy little narrow steps and then walks down the little narrow hallway, <clears throat> goes to pee. On his way back, he sees his wife passing in the hallway to go pee. And she's wearing a, uh, like a, just a long flowy white gown like she, like she was at the time. And, um, and he just kind of goes to the side and lets her slide through. And then when he goes back up to go, go back to sleep, he goes to lay on the bed and knowing that she just went to the bathroom, knowing no one else is in the bed, he lays down and goes like, like a classic dude placement when you just want to lay out and like hog up the whole bed, right? <laughs> I'm sure some of y'all know what that's like. So basically uh, when he does that, he's like, oh, he sees his, his partner right there. She was right there. Who was that in the hall? Ah! And he just, he freaks out and he's so spooked by it. And I've got goosebumps, honestly, just thinking about it. Um, Cause they both, this guy, he's not a woo woo type of person. And he swears that this is what happened. And he's like, yeah, that there's no way that couldn't have been a ghost, you know? And uh, you know, he tries not to even talk about it or think about it, you know? But uh, that's something that he can't deny. And look at all these plants he has in Scorpio. And look how he's a Libra. So Venus, his ruling planet is going into Scorpio. That's your ruling planet's placement is you going down your path in life in action and what you're going to see and face. And it's kind of interesting that's with that's Venus is his ruling planet because it was like a female ghost that he saw. And now we look at the eighth house and we see that the eighth house does have a strong Mula Tricona moon in it. And the moon rules K2. So there could have been a weird past life connection to that. And it's interesting, again, that it was a female ghost that he saw since that's a female sign and it has a female planet in it. Um, so that was a really like one that I've heard about from friends and people that was really well known. <clears throat> now, this is the chart of Edgar Casey, just for a more like famous example. Edgar Casey, I don't know if I'm getting the details right exactly, but he basically like would go down to this barn when he was a kid and he would uh, hang out with like his grandfather or uncle or something like that and talk and converse with him and later on realize that that guy had died. Like he had even maybe died near that, and like drowned near that lake or a barn or something. But he had basically uh, been talking to a ghost <laughs> for, for years and not even known it until he was later on as an adult realized it. And that's that's like some classic Rahu eighth house stuff, you know, and notice that he's a Leo rising. So his Lagna Lord also goes to the eighth house. Um, and it's got a lot of planets in there. So that's also, of course, why he was the sleeping prophet. His entire life was a very eighth house life. Um, it's not well known, but Edgar Casey made like, what, like 3000 predictions and only one or two of them were not accurate in his psychic career. And, um, in, in terms of personal readings he gave to people. And some of the only ones that were inaccurate were because he gave a reading for the person's brother in a different location accidentally. And it was actually accurate for the brother. So very, very interesting story. <clears throat> and this is kind of a more, uh, uh, an example that really reminds me of that because this is an example of just a woman that I know through friends and family. And she grew up in Colombia. She moved here when she was young, but when she was a young little girl in, in Bogota, Colombia, um, there was a funeral for her grandfather. She was not allowed to go because she was too young and little, but her grandfather came and visited her in ghost form. And she conversed with him in Spanish and wasn't even fluent in Spanish at that time. And uh, just, just they just had a visit and didn't she didn't realize this until years later that 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 could not oh sorry that was my dryer she didn't realize till later that this could not have been possible because that was the day of his funeral um and so that was another situation just like Edgar Casey's um you know like I was talking about yogis can have advanced conversations with ghosts and stuff here's a chart of Yogananda a true yogi who truly was able to station himself in different planes and realms and he had K2 in Scorpio, you see. So he is the opposite of all these Rahu Scorpio people where he had so strongly developed in that area of life. Funny thing is, Yogananda's life, the problem was material things, Taurus things, Rahu and Taurus. His problems were like getting enough money to, to buy the property at Mount Washington. You know what I mean? Or, or he always had struggles with money and had to pray to God for money in all these situations. Um, he actually, it's really admirable. He... He, he literally like had a 
like a ceremony on the Mount Washington grounds before he had even signed the contract, before he even had the money for it. But he was just so, had so much faith in God that he would get the money. And of course, it came through somehow. But yeah, Yogananda, this is just kind of a funny example of how Rahu and K2 work as well, because he was very advanced, very strong K2, the Lord of that Mars, very robust. So he, uh, ghosts were no problem to him. You know what I mean? And uh, in fact, ghosts were probably afraid of him. And uh, it was more of the material life that he had to work on with Taurus and Rahu in the 10th house. All right. So I hope that's a fun little example for you guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Scorpio time. Great time for meditation and turning within. Om. Oh.